Hello everybody, welcome back. And today's video is something you all have been asking for. Homemade Spam. It's time. So grab your balls and let's get to cannon. Before I get started on this video, I'm going to do a quick disclaimer. Kind of, not really. Well, just hear me out. Okay. Every time I do canning videos, there's always someone, a canning Karen is what we call them in the canning community, um, who wants to say, you can't do that. You better not do this or that. We don't do that here. It's my kitchen, my rules, and canning spam. I really don't know if this is rebel canning or not. I, you can can pork, so I don't think it is rebel canning. But this is a recipe that is decades and decades and decades and decades old. Okay. It has never failed me. So, before canning Karen's start, blah, 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 you know. Um, my Aunt Vicky is my moderator now, and she deletes them things quick, so don't even bother. Um, but if you do, my Aunt Vicky, I'm telling you, she's quick. She don't want no negativity in here. So, she will delete and block. So, so just don't. Let's just all have a good time. My kitchen, my rules. Your kitchen, your rules. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. But, I have got a lot of requests for this. And this is one of Dusty's absolute favorite things that I can. And, it's really good. And honestly, I don't think this is considered rebel canning. Because you can can all the ingredients. So, I don't think this is rebel canning. Pretty sure it isn't. But even if it is, my kitchen, my rules. It's fine. This is decades and decades old. It's fine. Now, now that I said that, all right. We are going to talk about the canning equipment that we need for homemade spam. You need a pressure canner, not a pressure cooker, not an instant pot, a pressure canner. Now, pressure cookers are just pressure cookers. They are not rated four jars for canning. But a pressure canner can also be a pressure cooker. Do you understand? A pressure cooker can't be a canner, but a pressure canner can be a cooker. So this is my pressure canner. This is a Presto 16 quart. This is my baby. I love her. Her name is Janine. I don't know why it just feels right. Janine. We got a little weight on here. This is a 15 pound weight. The pressure that you use for canning is all according to your elevation. My elevation requires 15 pounds of pressure for meats. So that's what I use. This is what the inside of her looks like. Can you see this? This is to keep the jars off of the bottom so that they don't get too hot and thermodynamics like do their thing and they explode. Okay, so you need one of those in there. And if you have lost yours by some chance, put a towel in it just so that the jars do not touch the bottom or you'll have a mess in there and you'll all your hard work will just be for nothing. So that's what you need. Along with your pressure canner, by the way, only a pressure canner. Meats require a pressure canner, not a water bath, a pressure canner, okay? Because it's safer this way. It's safe this way because if you use a water bath canner for meat, it'll spool and you could get sick and it could be bad. It could re be really bad. Pressure canner. Okay. And the reason we use a pressure canner is because it gets hot in there, baby. Like hot. Like insanely hot. Like no bacteria can live inside of this thing. All right. For spam, I highly recommend that you use wide mouth jars. 16 ounce pints. Wide mouth. And the reason I say that, if you use the regular mouth, you're not going to be able to get your spam out of it. So, this slides right out of the jar. So, you're going to be needing six to eight pint jars that are wide mouth for this recipe. Along with wide mouth, can you see it? Wide mouth lids and rings. Another piece of canning equipment you need is a ball grabber. 
Now that's pretty much all the canning equipment that you're gonna need. Now let's talk about the items that you're kinda gonna need for the spam, to make the spam. This is what you're gonna need. Five pounds of pork shoulder, one pound of ham. I just bought this little ham steak at the Wally World. Canning salt, Morton's Tender Quick Meat Cure, cornstarch, sugar, and water. I just showed you the items you're gonna to need to make the Spam. Now let me show you some things that you can grind up the meat with. We usually use this. It is a meat grinder. This was like $16 on Amazon. It, it, it's taken apart. I'll have Dusty put it together in a minute after I wash it up real quick because it's kind of dusty. And I'll show you what it looks like. Quick, this is what the grinder looks like. You put your meat in here and you press it down as you turn. And it comes out of these. There's like a couple different sizes of the holes. These are the bigger ones. This is just what Dusty hooked it up as. But this thing comes in so much handy. I love this. If you don't have a meat grinder like that, because I know not everybody has a meat grinder, you can use a food processor and spin it up and it'll work really good. You're also going to need a really big bowl. As big as you can find. Can't forget vinegar to wipe the rims. Have we covered everything? I think so. If we have not covered everything, I'll throw it in the middle. <laughs> I'm just gonna start dicing my ham steak into like little one inch cubes, I guess. My ham is cut up and I put it in this casserole dish. We're not gonna cook it or nothing, it's just, you'll see. Now let's do the same thing to the pork shoulder. Tell you what, I am gonna trim off a lot of this because I don't want that. Okay, we're just gonna cut the bone out and put it in the bag too. I can find it. But it came in handy five minutes ago. Now we're gonna cover this with saran wrap or aluminum foil, whatever, and we're gonna set it in the deep freezer for about an hour to hour and a half. First thing we're gonna do, wash your pressure canner, even if it's brand new, so you can get all of the manufacturing oils off of it. You want it clean. Next, wash all of your mason jars even if they're new because they have manufacturing oils on them, wash them. Since we're using a pressure canner, you don't need to pre-sanitize your jars. Because like I said earlier, nothing can live in this. You don't need to do that when you're pressure canning. Go ahead and fill your pressure canner up with the required amount for your canner. Every canner is different. My Presto 16 quart requires three quarts of water. So I have put three quarts of water in my canner and I am not turning the stove on. And let me tell you why. Everything needs to be the same temperature. So if I have cold raw meat going into a cold jar, the water and canner need to be cold. Or explosions and all of my hard work was for nothing. So, we're not gonna turn it on right now. We're just getting everything ready to go while we're waiting for the freezer to do its thing with the meat and make it a little more easy to handle. I forgot to tell you this part, future Brooke here, 
put a little splash of vinegar in your canner water before you do anything else. Um, it keeps the jars nice and clean. In my gigantic mixing bowl, I'm gonna add this. Three tablespoons of the Morton Meat Cure, three tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of cornstarch, and one tablespoon of canning salt. I put that all in this little bowl and I'm dumping it. One cup of water. We're gonna mix this all together until the quantities are gone. Now let's set this baby aside. I'm gonna be using the my food processor to do this because I know everybody doesn't have a meat grinder. So I'm doing it this way. I got my chilled beef, not beef. <laughs> I have my chilled meat here. It's sitting there for an hour and a half. Just getting it really, really cold makes it easier to grind up. That's usually when you're using a meat grinder. So you might not have to do it for this. Let's just start feeding it in here. That's what we want. See that? Ground up perfectly. So I'm gonna have to do this in batches. And I'm gonna take this out and put it in the little mixture we made a second ago. Oops, don't do that. You see this? It's all grinded up, and we're going to mix it together with that little mixture we have in there. Okay, when she's mixed good, she's ready to get put in the jars. Now, you can do this however you want to. You gotta pack it in our tight. I have my jar, as you see. And what I do, I just start stuffing it. And yes, it will get messy, but we're going to clean the jars up. Okay, you have to push it down so it'll be a loaf. All right. I'm gonna leave like a one inch head space on this after it's packed in. And I'm just going to push it down, try to get rid of any air bubbles I see in there. As you see, she's packed in there like a loaf. Now I'm gonna clean out the rim really good. If we don't clean off the rim, it won't seal. Now, like I said, some people like to use piping bags for this. And go ahead. I just find it's too messy. <laughs> I'm going to repeat the process. I'm not putting the lids on yet. I'll show you what to do after I pack all of the jars. Okay, I have filled each jar and made a loaf in there. You see this chopstick I have? We're going to... 
put a chopstick in the middle of each one to make a hole. This allows for a more even heat that cooks through just like that. Now we are going to take vinegar on a cloth and we're going to wipe the rims down good. Get all of that fat off. Now we're going to put our lids on. And no, you do not have to heat up the lids anymore because they have changed the way that they made the lids and you do not have to heat them up first. But make sure you wash them. Okay. Remember, as I always say, fingertip tight. Finger tilt tight is you go around, it stops on its own, but then you can go whoop, one more. Not, do not over tighten. Okay, made six jars. I have a little bit left over in the bowl that I'm gonna cook in the oven because Dusty wants some tonight. Okay, besties, it's time to load up this canner. Like I said before, it's cold. I have not heated this up at all. Take our garden spam. Just set them inside. With spam, there might be a little bit of siphoning. The fat likes to kind of escape sometimes. If that happens, don't panic. If it happens to mine today, I'll show you what you do after. So let's put the lid on and secure it in place. And we're gonna turn the heat on. Start heating this baby up. Do not put the weight on yet. We put the weight on when she's... Do not put the weight on yet. We put the weight on when there is a steady stream of steam coming out of this little vent for at least 10 minutes. Do you see that? You see the steam? I'm trying to get it on camera. There it is. It's a steady stream of steam now. Usually this little nipple pops up when the steady stream has started. Um, that's what I always wait for. So now I'm gonna start the timer for 10 minutes. And don't skip this step. This is extremely important because we need to get all the air out of this canner so it can fill up with steam. If you don't do this, it's not gonna cook properly. So don't skip this step. 10 minute timer has went off. Now we can put on the weight. So what I'm gonna do now is turn down the heat just a little bit. I don't want it to get out of control. I'm gonna wait for this pressure to go to 15 because my area needs 15 pounds of pressure. You have to check your manual to see how many pounds of pressure you need for meat but me personally it's 15 pounds so when i get to 15 pounds i will show you the next step by the way i'm just going to let you guys know you don't need to be afraid of pressure canners the old models were the ones that exploded these don't explode if they do it's extremely rare they have so many safety mechanisms this will blow out and let release the pressure before anything explodes so these are safe to use don't panic we're at pressure so we're going to turn this down do you see this this is okay this is what we call jiggling it's just keeping the pressure where it needs to be now this is a good speed but if it starts doing this you need to turn your heat down this is how you control your pressure if you think this is getting out of control or if you are at a 10 PSI and you want to keep it at 10, that is how you control your pressure. So now we're going to set the timer for 75 minutes because that's how long this takes to pressure again. <gasps> 75 minutes. See you when it's done. Timer went off. That means turn the timer off and completely 
turn the heat off. Now, we're just gonna wait. Wait for the pressure to go down naturally. And when it gets to zero, you can take off the weight and open her up. But right now we have to wait. Pressure is on zero. We can take this off and I'm gonna open it up. Here it is, fresh out of the canner. And you can see here that there is a little siphoning. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours, not touch it, and then wash them. Here they are next day. As you can see, it has solidified cause you know the fat. And that's what it looks like. It doesn't look great. It's not pretty cause you know, it's me in a clear jar. But I checked the seal, the seals, the seals are good. And I just washed them off with some soapy water and dried them. I wanna label them and then put them in storage. Thousand times better than store-bought spam. That's how you can homemade spam. It's a work of love. It takes a minute to get all the air out of your jars and you know to pack it in there really good. But it's a it's so worth it. It is so worth the work. That is the best spam you will ever have. It tastes a thousand times better. You know where the meat come from, you know what is in it, you know how long it's been sitting there. Homemade spam, top tier. If you give this a go, I hope you love it. Little tips for me, because it's trial and error over time, and I've done this for a long time. And one thing I can say, please try to get all the air pockets out of your loafs when you put it in there. Um, don't over tighten your jars, they can pop off. And please try to get the meat as fine as you can if it is too thick, too coarse like, um, it, the meat won't stick together well in the loaf. Um, it'll kind of crumble apart, which would still be good. It'll still be tasty. You'll just have spam crumble. If you don't have a pressure canner and you want to make this, you can still make this. Just get you a meatloaf pan, pack it in there, cook it on about 375. The timing is all according to how big your loaf is. So... I would advise you to use a meat thermometer to stick it in to make sure it gets to the right temperature for pork. And you can store it in the refrigerator for a couple weeks because it is cured, or you can even freeze it. You can slice it up, freeze it, or you can just freeze the whole loaf if you wanted to. So this isn't just for pressure canning, but pressure canning is awesome because it can last years as long as it stays sealed. Now, don't freak out over this. This is called a fat cap. It's just when all of the fat solidifies, as with anything. So, I want to go take my spam, label it, put it in my pantry, and I'll see you guys next video. Remember, as always, be positive, kind, be happy, and I love you. I will see you guys later. Bye.